Good afternoon, everyone. If I could just bring everybody a little bit closer, that would be great. I don't want to yell. Here's my cafeteria voice. Teachers Union. First, I'd like to thank you all for coming this afternoon, um, and I would also like to say thank you to um, some very important people who have helped make this rally happen today. Um, Alex Lucini has been very, very instrumental, thank you, um, in helping me. Mr. Arujo, where's Mike Arujo? Where are you? Thank you, Mike Arujo from Jobs with Justice. Um, I see Councilman Zuria here. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Zuria, for showing up. Thank you, Mr. Santow from the um, Providence School Board. Thank you for showing up, and you're always giving us your support on this important issue. Um, Frank Flynn from the Rhode Island Federation of Teachers is here. Colleen Callahan from the Rhode Island Federation of Teachers and Health Professionals. Jim Parisi from the Rhode Island Federation of Teachers and Health Professionals. Uh, Dan Wall, Cranston School Committee uh, member, and obviously Providence Teachers Union member. Um, and if I forgot anybody, I apologize, but thank you for being here. Um, the reason why we're here this afternoon... That's not going to work. The reason why we're here this afternoon is um, to talk about saving Providence schools. And um, saving Providence schools is extremely significant, not only now, um, but has been for the past couple of months. Over the past couple of months, members from the Providence Teachers Union and I have stood um, before the Rhode Island Department of Ed and made a case for saying no to the expansion of Achievement First. Achievement First expansion stands to take upwards of $35 million away from Providence Public Schools. And considering the financial dire straits that we're in currently, I don't think that we should be giving $35 million away to another entity when we could be using that as resources for our students. Um, on our students, the ones that we care about every day, the ones that we teach every day, our students that shine every day, our students that are creative and thoughtful and critical thinking, our students who will be as successful, if not more successful, than any other student that you would put them up against. Those are our students. And why stood and sat and listened to people on the Board of Education who called us failing teachers, called our schools failing schools, and called our children failing students. And I find it not only despicable, but I find it deplorable that the mayor of this city, the mayor that calls himself an education mayor, sat by and listened and let those things be said about each and every one of us and the children of this city. It is unacceptable to me that he let that happen. It is unacceptable to us as a community It is unacceptable to us as a community that our students who come to these schools every day are broken down schools that are in disrepair every day and give us 110% of their best to be called failing. These schools aren't failing. What failed was the system. Okay? What failed was a governor who put a moratorium on construction for schools. And leaders who kick the can down the road year after year saying that we can repair this next year and we can repair that next year or the year after or the year after that. And so what do we have? We have Mount Pleasant High School that has ropes and netting holding up the front of the building. We have mold growing trees 
in some buildings. We have classrooms that are uninhabitable by our children. None of those things are acceptable to any of us. So we did not fail our students. Our students aren't failing, and we are not failing teachers. The system has failed us. And if we let the mayor exercise his veto power, we can work to rebuild this system to be a system that we can be proud of. We're proud of our kids. We're proud of the work that we do. But we're not proud going into buildings that have 110 degrees in one classroom and 35 degrees in another. We're not proud to walk around garbage cans that are holding three months worth of God knows what coming from the roof. That's not things that make us proud. Our kids make us proud. Our students make us proud. The only way our mayor's going to make us proud is if he vetoes this expansion. And before I hand over the mic, I just, I just want to be abundantly clear about how important it is for each and every one of us to go back to our schools, to those who couldn't come today for whatever reason, and to share those cards that you filled out and have them filled out so that we can take them to the mayor's office. Because if the mayor is what he claims to be, the education mayor, then he will continue to support public schools in Providence, say no to the Achievement First expansion, and fund us at the level that we need to be funded so that we continue, can continue to give our children high quality, rigorous education. Simple ask. We're not asking for the world. We're just asking for support. And in the future, it is my hope that any mayor who is in that office would not sit idly by while his teachers and his students and his schools were demoralized. The Board of Education thumb their noses at the General Assembly. Councilman Zuria, Councilman Principe did yeoman's work in doing a fiscal impact study, a realistic fiscal impact study, not some created nonsense voodoo economics projected by a Brown student, but real fiscal impact, and it was ignored. That was their one job, to consider the fiscal impact of what this expansion would do to this city, and they chose not to do it. So now, although I still don't understand how our mayor can be on the board of Achievement First and the mayor of the city in charge of public schools, he is in that position, and it is up to him as to whether or not he will veto this expansion. We need to be loud and clear from here on out until this decision is made that anything less than a full veto of this expansion is unacceptable to us. Yes.